And this video is going to help us learn about uh, Chapter 5, Section 1, New York and the Ice Ages. So, throughout Earth's history, we've had several ice ages that have occurred, and an ice age is going to be a point in time where the glaciers uh, have move in from the north and become an ice sheet, they call it, and cover huge areas of the Earth's surface. So, we'll see in a couple minutes how an ice sheet covered uh, most of North America in the not-so-distant past of Earth's history. So, to start, a glacier is a huge, huge area of ice that slowly begins to move under gravity's pull. So, here we have a kind of look from a person's point of view of a glacier, and it looks like this giant wall of ice. You have to understand that this was deposited in layers, one on top of the other, over sometimes thousands and thousands of years. So the ice down here in the bottom uh, is very old, and the ice up on top would be the newest snow that just formed recently. And as the ice falls, the snow falls on top, the weight pushing down uh, compresses the snow at the bottom and turns it into ice. And in Earth's history, we have, here's a, a diagram showing the borders of some of those ice ages. Here's one of the borders that went right uh, just north of New York. Uh, there was several others that have occurred in Earth's history that covered huge areas of the Earth's surface. All right, here's another picture. New York State would be right here. So you live in a place that at some point was covered in several thousand feet of ice. So that glacier put Elmsford and Westchester and almost all of New York State completely under ice. Now as the climate warmed, that ice began to melt, right? So all that ice needed to flow somewhere. It melted into water and flowed away. So if you look here, a huge lake formed in North America and flowed in several directions. A lot of that water flowed down the hill this way, out towards the Atlantic Ocean. Some flowed uh, across North America towards Alaska, which was down the hill at that point. Some flowed down and, and changed the flow of the Mississippi River. And some flowed out through the Great Lakes and uh, formed what is today the Hudson River and the St. Lawrence River. We'll see those rivers in detail later. So on this diagram, we can see what's called an ice dam. The ice built up like a wall. When that ice wall broke, all that water flooded southward, down the hill, and out to the Atlantic Ocean. So Long Island is here. Elmsford is right here. And the ocean used to have its shoreline miles and miles further out to sea. All the water that was in the ice had to come from somewhere and came from the ocean. So the ocean level went down as the ice got larger. So today, the coastline is here. But 13,000 years ago, the coastline was much further out to sea. When you look on Earth, you'll find two major types of glaciers. We have what are known as valley glaciers or um, alpine glaciers, your book calls them, and we have ice sheets, sometimes known as continental glaciers. Valley glaciers are small. They exist in the mountains. Uh, here's a valley glacier right here, and it goes way off into the mountains. And we have ice sheets, like the continent of Antarctica, which is one continuous block of ice from one side to the other. The entire continent of Antarctica, except for a few places, is completely covered in ice. So which one do you think this is? So here we have a picture of a glacier. It is spilling over the side of a hill. That ice flows downhill just like water does. So you can see it kind of pouring out here into the valley. And if you looked at this and said that that was a valley glacier, right, you would, you would be correct. So we know this is a valley glacier because it's small, it's filling a valley, right, and it's flowing downhill on its way being pulled by gravity. And over time, glaciers will grow and recede. They will move down the hill and then melt up, up towards the hill. They never flow uphill. They don't move uphill. But if they melt more than they, uh, than they advance, they will appear to get smaller. So this glacier here, the Muir Glacier in Alaska in 1941, was this big. 2004, this whole area, which was under ice, has now melted away and become a lake. 
right? Part of a, a bay that ends to the ocean. And the glacier, the border of the glacier is all the way back here. So this glacier has retreated, they call it, has melted away up the hillside. Now, when you look at glaciers, there are several features. Your book goes in detail through these different features. My concern is that when you see these terms, you know they connect two glaciers. So if you read the word erratic or till or finger lakes, you know those are features that are glacial. They are made by glaciers. Let's take a look at some of them in a little more detail. So glacial polish is what made this rock all smooth. Right? It, uh, as the glacier melted, rocks got kind of spun around in the water, causing these, these holes to be dug. These are called potholes. You can see this uh, guy is not me. Um, he's pointing to stripes. These are scratches in the side of the rock that the glacier made as the glacier slid down the hill, scraping the rock as it moved. Here's a finger lake. These finger lakes were caused as the glacier scraped away land. The material was left behind and the valley behind it filled up with water. Till is a word we use for the sediment. So you can see it's all mixed in size. There are big rocks next to sand. There are middle-sized rocks next to the big ones. It's all different sizes, completely unsorted. So there's no order to this at all. There's no pattern. We would call this unsorted. Here is a hill. You should see that this side of the hill is a short, steeper side than the back here. This is called a drumlin. The drumlin tells us the direction that the glacier was moving. The glacier moved along this line, right? And the, the glacier, as it scraped away material, formed these very unique shaped hills. A moraine is a word we give to the final hill, the big pile of debris that the front of the glacier makes. So here's a picture of the terminal moraine for one glacier moving down. There's another moraine here for a previous glacier that moved at a different period in time. So every time the glacier moves forward, it pushes material, and then it bah, melts away and forms again, pushes more material. So we wind up with a series of moraines that are being made. When you look at this picture, you might be able to see what's left of the moraine. The moraine stretches right here, makes the hills on Long Island, and then continues down into New Jersey. That is an example of a moraine. When you see the word moraine, I need you to think of Long Island. That is formed by a moraine. Right. Here's another way to look at it. The ice pushes down the hill. Oops, sorry. The ice pushes down the hill. As it pushes down, it forms big piles of sediment in the in front of it. That Sediment is what we call the moraine. So it moved down this way, and it formed these big piles. When the ice was down here, it made this pile. When the ice was down this far, it made this pile. Here's a picture of one. As the snow moves down the hill, it was, the snow used to be all the way down to here. You can see this big pile of rock that was made. This was pushed down the hill by the ice. When the ice melted, it became a pool of water, and the rock pile remained behind. Can you spot the moraine here? Glacier moves down the hill. It used to be all the way down here and forms this moraine. It's a big pile of sediment. So glaciers work just like bulldozers. They only push. They push and push and push until they back up and the big pile remains behind. Another feature you're going to need to know about is called a kettle lake. Kettle Lake is when a depression, a, a big hole, gets pushed into the ground by the weight of the ice. And then when the ice melts, it fills up that hole with the water, and you wind up with a lake. Okay? Can you spot all the Kettle Lakes that are in this photo? There's hundreds of them. Every one of them was a different area where ice piled up, made a hole, a depression in the ground, kind of squished the ground into a bowl shape. And then when the ice melted, now they fill with rainwater. This entire landscape's covered in them. Erratics. Erratics, very common in New York. You'll see them around Elmsford even. They are big, giant boulders that do not match the rock beneath it. So this type of rock is not the same as this type of rock. 
So it was a, it was brought here by the ice. Right? Here's another example. This boulder is not the same kind of rock that's under the ground here. It was brought here by the ice. Same with this one. If you dig down in here, you'll find a totally different type of rock. This rock was transported hundreds of miles, thousands of years before this tree grew. And this tree is thousands of years old. So you can see the tree growing into the rock. It's been there so long. So here's a picture that kind of gives you all of these at once. Drumlins, kettle lakes, moraines. This pile here would be a moraine, right? Showing you all the features that a glacier can make. So when we deal with the glaciers and the ice age, here's what you need to know. Glaciers form when more snow falls than melts. An ice age occurs when the glaciers combine to form an ice sheet. As gravity pulls the glacier downhill, many features form. And after the ice melts, the features remain behind. All the hills and the lakes, they all remain behind. That's how we know the glacier was here. So that was this is the video for, cha for Chapter 5, Section 1. I hope it is useful. I answer the questions below, and good luck.